Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 18. It is the 29th of August 2019. I am Ryan the GM after many audio issues. Here are my players. Hi, I'm Callum. I'm playing Lord Eric Greenwood, the human sorcerer. Hi, I'm Aria. I'm Adrian. I play Aria Bluebird, a half of druid. <laughs> and I seem to have been inspired by Callum in his um, well, shenanigans. I nailed it. <laughs> He's passed the curse on. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sophie. I play Kitty the Kill, a tabaxi rogue. <laughs> Hello, I'm Stuart. I play Reach, a half elf monk. That is very Did specific. Oh, <laughs> uh, so you got rogue, rogue. We got it. <laughs> 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 not just a tabaxi roo. Tabaxi roo. Tabaxi roo. No score it's as of like yet. Tabaxi roo. Um, but yeah, so no score as of yet. Who knows if we'll get score? It was a last minute session, but since that we're going to be off for a bit, we may as well just play. Um, right, straight in to. Who remembers what happened last time? Oh, Swirly Vortex, me, me, Magic Man. <laughs> wow, was that your notes? <laughs> yes. Love it. Um, yeah, that that is true. You went into a Swirly Vortex, uh, more or less deliberately, and then, yeah, walked through some red space. Found a dude. Yeah. Now I'm a, now a friend. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, you found a dude. I'll agree that much. I uh, um, introduced himself as Magna. I uh, that's that's true. And then yeah, you say uh, you went back to his house, his his gaff. <laughs> uh, what about everybody else? So after wandering the red light district, you went back to this guy's house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my! <laughs> I mean, if that's your fantasy, reach. Yeah, if you want to see Eric <laughs> naked with Magna, that's up to you, buddy. And if you subscribe to our highest level Patreon, <laughs> that can be for you too. <laughs> Patreon forward slash Victor Triumph. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> uh, also, to uh, have upcoming art commissions possibly coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anything else happened? Yeah, the rest of the party went to go see uh, Princess to have tea and scones, as I quote. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see how good that goal is in a minute. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, yeah. So I think everybody else went to go to Horizon. That was the original plan. You bailed on going to Glitterhagen, redirected the boat to uh, Horizon, and the party were just pulling into the actual harbour uh, where we left them. Uh, While well, you decided to go off with Magna. Back to his house. So, mm -hmm. what we do is we go and talk about goals, and we'll see how this works. So, anyone that's willing to navigate to the game manager, because I know everybody's in there already, um, you'll find the goals page. And after some discussion, me and Stu, I realised there needs to be a bit of clarity on this the goals page. So. The active goal is the only thing you can get XP for. Everything else isn't a goal until then. Couldn't even be considered that, because reality may change a million times, so they're all just ideas that could become goals. And that's quite an important description. It's not a quest log user working through. So I think that's where we were maybe a bit confused before. Obviously, currently I'm allowing Eric to have a, a slightly separate achievable goal, given his current predicament. Um, which is mostly, can you get back to the party? Uh, even though he was literally offered that choice and chose not to. But, you know, that's adventure for you. Got uh, a new plan. Yeah. But, on that note, let's speak about wording this week's goal for the main party. How would you like it worded? What are you looking to achieve in Horizon? One problem with this at the moment is it was Crumber's idea, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's Scott's typical thing of, right guys, so uh, I've, I've come up with the idea, if you could just see it through, uh, I'll catch up. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's kind of like the you know he's Charlie in Charlie's Angels you know Crumbar's Angels there we go I don't think I like that but okay <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so Arya Kitty and Reach what's the plan right. on the horizon I'm going to use the letters to talk to the princess about the Letters, Citadel, and the Great Gold Worm. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have anything to add, like you've covered it all. Yeah, well, what if you do? I won't be allowed. Well, <laughs> it's okay, but, <laughs> but really, though, that abbreviates down to use letters to talk to a princess about the situation. There's a word for it. There you go. Cool. Somebody type nice. that into the goal that isn't just have teen scones. And we'll, at least that's. Don't worry, I'll get rid of those ones. It's the one at the top with the. Oh, don't! I'm doing the second bolt because it's halfway there. But the... right, I can just copy that over, and that's me sorted. No worries. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Get rid of the rest. And Eric, what about you? Still happy with your reunite? Hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Talk to me. I want to see if uh, Magna can help me understand my book. <laughs> uh, the book you don't have? That you didn't bring with you. <sighs> okay, <laughs> maybe you can help me understand my uh, unwanted bond more. Right, okay. And how to, uh, maybe he could help me escape such a fate. Right, so or give me knowledge. So you would like to... Gain knowledge on Zybond. Right. Let's let's word this into a goal. So, what you're looking to get Magna to help you learn more about it to what end? So to break it. Yeah, to break it. Right. So you find a way to break your bond with the blue. Is the way. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know about this, but I presume it's what gives you your sorcery powers. Maybe, but. I don't want to be held captive by a big blue dragon. I mean, eh, that's a that's a reasonable goal. Or like, I say, find a way to break it. See if it's possible to break it. Okay, well, do you want to word that that way? Because those are different it's goals. Reasonable. Yeah. yeah, those are very different goals. Yeah. You're just giving yourself options. Uh, so that's the same as the goal you just said. That's find a possible way to break my bond with the blue. Do you mean find if it is possible to break my bond with the blue? Is that what you're thinking? Or do you just want to find a way to actually do it? No. Nope. Uh, I just added possible and then was re rereading to see if that was what I wanted. That was all. Yeah, I don't want to delete it and rewrite it. No worries. That's cool with me. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with those goals then. If you guys are, and let's see, I'm just gonna quickly pop this up here and then change that. Right. Yes, that works for me. And obviously, Scott. Well, you wanted to go to Horizon, so here we are. Um, yeah, I think we open up with the boat, or ship I guess, heading into the harbour. And I'll move it back to the harbour as we had before. Uh, lots of uh, magic nonsense going on, as you can remember. And yeah, you are probably all on the top deck as well, uh, as you come in. Eremos is obviously super hype because this is very impressive and not just a random ass like two story tower in the middle of a forest. Um and I mean, even compared to the Golden Citadel, this is pretty impressive. Floating islands and such. Aye. So you just come up and end up the ship kind of docks. You just get off. Anything you're saying to each other as you go? Anything you specifically want to do? Uh, 
Other than quite an impressive view, but no, let's mm -hmm. yeah. go see the princess. Yeah. yeah. So I just plan on going about that. Good question. Right up to the front door, chap on it, and well, probably when you chap on it, probably somebody there. Just mm -hmm. show them the letters. Yeah. So, is there in the harbour, as it were, for Horizon? Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming Kitty and Arya are still fully conscious and with us. Yeah. Yup. Good. So, what are you yeah. up to? I'm mm. just sort of looking around. Mm -hmm. Taking it all in. Well, I mean, yeah. technically. Well, that is new to me, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you've been here before, Kitty. So. Mm, just sort of seeing what's I'll changed. I'll be the one that's looking around and, you know, maybe not really liking it because it's, you know, very man made. Yeah, most definitely. Very artificial. Um, mm -hmm. Very much. Uh, I've got Rue, so that's like the little bit of nature that I have with me all all the time, so that's good. Um, yeah, so I'll be walking around with her probably perched on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Like a, you know... Like a pirate. Like I was, I was thinking like a woodland pirate, mm -hmm. pirate but yeah. <laughs> yeah, a woodland pirate. Yeah, uh, I was going to say up a pirate, but I thought that was a bit too much. Um, let's move on swiftly, shall we? Um, yeah, so you set up towards the main kind of entrance way into Horizon, and it is a big kind of archway that's kind of just filled with shimmering kind of bluish purple light. So mm -hmm. you kind of walk into like you know a big, a very big large wall, as it were, um, and then as I said, this big archway filled with kind of purplish blue light and the archway is very very large like you're talking maybe like three stories tall um, so yeah and yeah you're welcome to walk through mm -hmm. yeah we carry on walking through yep as you walk through uh, you step oh. into the kind of energy field as it were there's a tingle all up your kind of spine and whatnot if you have spines and such, based on various races, and then step through, and you're in like a totally different environment again. It's almost like a very large kind of plaza with big gardens. Um, there seems to be lots of stalls and shops and things around the edges of it. Um, goes on for quite a bit. You can see like towers and various things in the distance, um, but there is an instant change in smell. There's no like salty sea air or anything. That's all gone instantly. And then reach. Is that no all of you is roll perception? That's there we go. Go for that. Mm -hmm. Character sheet one moment. Mm -hmm. Bad, bad, bad. Ah! Nice. Mm -hmm. I see all the things. Oofed. Sounds kitty. Yeah. Damn, um. girl! <laughs> Meow! Girl! <laughs> uh, no, I just noticed that's a natural 20, so I was like, damn, girl! Yeah. Let's see. I'm just gonna make a reroll. Describe them to me because I'm too busy looking for where the princess is. Damn! Hermos. <laughs> yeah. Damn, there goes his uh, ability to learn anything this week by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, everybody, though, everybody realizes, but I think Eramos and uh, Kitty realize, like, first, um, maybe Eramos is just trying to take everything in possible. Um, but yeah, Kitty realizes first, then obviously Arya, and then Reach, because maybe, I don't know, maybe Reach notices the other two going straight for their letters. Kitty, your letter opens. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. What does it say? So the the seal just kind of like Please. like disappears in like kind of gold light, and maybe that's what you notice, um, like from I don't know, like your sleeve or your pocket or wherever you kept it, and then uh, mm. you, okay. it doesn't say don't enter the city in for any mm. reason at all. For whatever so. you do, never <laughs> come to Horizon. I'll explain everything in due time. <laughs> <laughs> Crumbar. 
<laughs> but no, Cr Crumbar is technically with us. It yeah. would probably be Eric. No, no, it, it, it would say Crumbar just for the drama. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but no, <Is> so, <laughs> and he'd be looking at it going, I didn't write that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you, the letter kind of like, the, the seal vanishes and kind of gold sparkles, and then um, you unfold it. And then the paper just kind of through like, almost like kind of oil stained ink with all the different colours. It forms Welcome to Horizon in like script. Um, mm. It says uh, you are invited uh, by royal request uh, to an audience with Princess Justoria. And then it, the ink kind of stains away into a map. Onto the letter. That's handy. Mm. And that is what everybody gets when you eventually look at yours to obviously yeah. confirm the same things. So yeah. yeah. Looks as though we're expected. Or invited at least anyway. That's... Mm -hmm. And then uh, yeah, we close there and we open up with Eric. <laughs> His letter still closed I presume. Ah uh, well, we don't know that. And uh, okay. So Eric. You I... you step through into the heat. Uh, by comparison to like the kind of coastal air you are familiar with from the boat versus the uh, almost nothingness and kind of again that kind of static feeling of things moving past you and by static I mean TV static um, feeling of things kind of rushing past you and then you step into like a kind of very um, what's the word Middle Eastern heat maybe um, and as I said there's a smell of like kind of very nice spices in the air. Um, there's kind of a jovial music playing where you can't quite tell you just know there is music as if from like the next room over but you're in a very large kind of rectangular room it's got steps down into the kind of the middle and there's um, like kind of cushions and tropical plants and things and uh, various crystals floating that give off different coloured lights almost like Ooh. stained glass fancy yeah, and um, as I said, the man who introduced himself as Magna kind of walks in and then uh, the kind of red vortex kind of closes behind you and then he just kind of sits his, like, just lets go of his staff as it kind of just hangs midair uh, and he goes and he uh, sits on one of his kind of big kind of cushions in that kind of sunken area and he gestures across like a, maybe one of those kind of foot high tables that looks more like a big cushion. He gestures across that um, for you to kind of sit. Yeah, I'm going to go sit down. Mm -hmm. so you sit there in your fine elven silks and your big red infected hammer. And, uh, yep. He uh, kind of leans forward slightly and says, Are you hungry? I think yeah. it's easy to figure out what Crumbar's reply to that will be. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm hungry. Uh, what's on offer? What would you care for? Don't say German sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you'd be confused at what German is. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Oof. Be Anything in the log. Sausages. Oh, what would Eric want? He would want some posh meal that his servants would cook up. Mm. How posh are we talking? Are we talking some kind of exotic, you know, Midland Sea caviar? Or are we talking, you know, what, like... Uh, probably something meaty, I'd imagine. Mm. Mm. Avocado? Like... Uh... <laughs> I say words that mean I don't know what they mean. <laughs> I'm not a foodie. I know what you meant this time. <laughs> oh, dear. oh, you said cat. Ah. Yeah, it's like a crumb bar thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I'm a bit slow. That's okay. <laughs> N um, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> well, calm down. You don't want to get too excited there. Not me, no. Oof. <laughs> I, actually, I just want steak and chips. So it nice, wholesome, and had it in a long time. Yeah, so you order steak and chips from the magic traveling Magna. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
Sure. I've not had proper food for a while. That's I'm just just cravings. Roll a wisdom save. Uh, Captain G, open. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, he gestures a hand to the kind of table in front of you, and crafts of a uh, fancy wines appear, um, and various other kind of drinks, things you would have expected to drink alongside your steak and chips, as it were. Uh, and nice. like very large, um, very appealing looking steak, and a big kind of you know platter of chips there as well, and then various like sauces and spices and salts, um, all That's kind of just like kind of opening up kind of table all kind of leaning into it themselves as well for each other's like pinch and cover over and Magna kind of leans back and then he kind of puts his hand out to the side and all of a sudden someone is there I am serving him a drink <laughs> something that you clearly didn't notice before because you're maybe too busy kind of looking at the, the pile of food that kind of materialised and he just kind of after he kind of takes the, the glass kind of goblet thing from the person. He turns back and he goes, by all means, indulge. Thank you, Magda. I nod my head in thanks. <laughs> oh wait, shut! Sure. Bit... Sorry, I was confusing voices there. I didn't realize that was Callum. I thought that was... Sorry. <laughs> I'll shut up. Bye. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> None? It's okay. Carry on. I'm... Um, let me get my train of thought. Uh, so he says, food. by all means, in Dutch. Tuck it in. Ah, I'm going to elegantly start tucking in knife and fork and just like, like add spices, add a bit of sauce, like, cut up a bit of steak, eat it. Not too much, a little tiny bite-sized piece. <laughs> you know, elegantly. Yeah, no, the colour is like kind of like very kind of shiny black twisted metal as well. It's all very kind of elegant and dainty and you know, looks like it should break, but it doesn't, you know. So yeah, Ex no expense spared, you yeah. know. I imagine it tastes nice, so I really want stick. And then uh, he's kind of just sat there as you like eat for a bit. And how long do you let pass while you're eating before you say anything? Because he's just sat there slowly drinking, watching you. Creepy. It, it probably is quite creepy, to be honest. I'm going to get like halfway through a steak, like, I don't know, <laughs> two, three minutes, and just be like... There's a lot of steak, by the way. It's definitely more than a two, three minute job, by the way. It's a, it, oh, it was a generous okay. portion. So, two or three minutes, I'm just going to look at it and we go, are you not going to eat? And he kind of leans in and says, I have already eaten. Hmm. Then, uh, Excuse me, as I uh, sit here silently and munch. I mean, uh, he kind of leans says, "We can have entertainment while you eat, if you wish." Yeah, that sounds good. What would you enjoy? I would like a gladiator match. You see him smile. And he says, an excellent choice. And then um, you see to the uh, kind of beneath, like see the sunken part of the floor where the steps kind of go down in this kind of fancy kind of almost marble kind of stonework. Uh, so it's maybe like a big rectangular room. You've stepped down maybe four or five steps into the smaller rectangle where all these kind of features are arranged and the floor shimmers and you're looking straight down into what looks like a coliseum beneath you. Nice. Um, and yeah, it does, it seems to be various kind of British looking races um, already fighting. Ooh. And then as a, you kind of like, you know, maybe you're leaning over the kind of table thing, picking up bits of food, eating it and sitting back to look obviously below, since it is just the floor that seems to be transparent now. Excuse me. And he says, um, have you ever had the pleasure of the city of Axis? And he waves to the kind of Colosseum beneath. Unfortunately, no. I've been uh, wrestling Glitterhagen all my life. And can you roll history for me? Uh, 
Yeah, so Axis is an independent city that isn't part of the kingdom. Um, yeah, it's... The reason it's independent is because it's run by dragons. Um, so yeah, dragons that aren't quite Great Gold Worm level are all, all about Axis. Um, generally, some gold dragons, not many, generally gold dragons stick to the Golden Order or wherever else they go. Um, there's not many gold dragons. Silver dragons, um, they're pretty much in charge there. I, and then there's like copious amounts of a uh, bronze and brass dragons there too. So any yeah. bluish ones? Hmm. <laughs> no chromatic dragons of any kind, <laughs> no. Um, they're generally considered uh, decent folks in Axis, hence why they haven't like attempted to take over. <laughs> like the Wizard Kingdom, as it were. Yeah. But yeah, it's a city not ruled by the Wizard King. Um, it's actually not far from... It's the one in between Horizon and Glitterhagen, actually. I'll take us back to the map and I'll point it out. For folks. It is... Let me just point to it here. Where is my pointing tool? Right, so... Dun 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 dun. There. So that's the city of Axis. It's actually in the kind of crater of a volcano. Big, big, huge volcano. And the city is mm. nestled in there. And Active or not? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's debatable, depending on who you ask. Um, people say the dragons keep it quiet. And obviously if they tried to take the city, they could erupt it. So nobody really wants to take it. Um, above the city of Axis as well is said to be a connection point to the overworld where the dragons live primarily. So if there were gold dragons, they'd probably be there. Think of it like I don't know, like a kind of space station equivalent, I guess, um, above the city, uh, or a kind of cloud base. The but mystical and fantasy, of course. But yeah, so if you were dragonborn, for example, you'd probably come from Axis unless whatever random adventure took you elsewhere in the world. But that's where the dragonborn come from, that's where dragons live. It's mostly a city of testing your might and staying strong at the survival of the fittest. Uh, yeah, so they're all about gladiatorial battles or tests of might and damn impressive as well. So there you go. You've... yeah. I think I'll just leave us on the title screen for now, until we go somewhere else. But yeah. So, as you watch, I, it's probably a dragonborn versus like a full-blooded orc, quite frankly. I, um, and that's probably what you're watching just now. And again, nice. as you're uh, sitting eating, watching away, Magnus just looking at you, not even paying attention beneath. But how much of that you notice given the food and the... Uh, the fight that go, goes on, who knows? Probably next to none, I imagine. But then, here's a question, who's Eric rooting for then? The Orc, or the Dragonborn? The Dragon. The Dragonborn? Cool. Yeah. So yeah, big scaly half-dragon man fighting big Orc man. Yeah. Cool. And then, um, yeah, they fight until one of them dies, let's see. So odds will be that the Orc dies. Let's see, d20. Odds, orc dies. There you go, the dragonborn one. Yeah. Happy days. The one I picks wins. There you go. So I think um, maybe that came up in conversation as you were watching. Like you could tell that you were clearly rooting for the dragonborn. <clears throat> and he sits and he, he says, I see you have a good eye for strength. Um, yeah, he seems to be the stronger opponent, he seems to be more intellectual about his fighting. I didn't see the orc really standing too much of a chance. Brute strength doesn't do, does get you too far. I find strength has its place. Indeed. I think at this point we'd get subtitles that translate the name Magna to equal power. At that point, just for 
comedic effect for the audience at home. Mm. And yeah, he just kind of sits back. Um, so yeah, you finish the meal. He said very little. Do you like spark up any more conversation with him? About this bond you mentioned, is there any possible way that I could free myself from it? He's kind of like, he finishes kind of taking a drink from his goblet. It hasn't seemed to have emptied, by the way, since it was filled. Um, and he says, Most bonds can be broken. What's the cost? And he kind of tilts his head slightly towards you as if he's weighing something up in his head. He says, The cost often depends on what forged the bond. You say you have no knowledge of this bond being made. That's right, I don't. So it was made on your behalf? Yeah, I'd imagine so. I just want to know who. I think if you start there, perhaps you will find your answer. I have no clue where to start. He kind of just sits back and he says, Do you have any enemies? I don't think there's... I have many enemies. If I do, they haven't made themselves known. And he just takes like a long, slow sip of his wine. Then it would seem you are stuck with your bond. Mm. I do have a uh, another question. That is to find my parents. They they disappeared all a long time ago, and I haven't heard head nor tail of them. And you believe them to be alive? Something tells me they are. His eyes narrow very slightly. There's this something. And he waves his hand as if to elaborate. It's just a feeling. I don't usually go by feeling, but this one I kind of want to hold on to. And he kind of just sits there as if, like, unmoved by whatever you've said. It's very hard man to read this. A very difficult man to read. A man of immense power. Mm. But yeah. So yeah, he just sits there, sipping his wine, staring. Huh. Where are we, by the way? We are in my home. Whereabouts is this located? It would not be somewhere you could walk to, if that is your question. So, we're either on an island or we're in a floating city. So limited. Are we in a different dimension? And he kind of smirks at that. And kind of like tilts his glass to you ever so slightly. We are in my own personal pocket dimension ah. for privacy. He kind of nods towards your hammer. Of course. You must be fairly powerful to uh, own a pocket dimension. He says, do you not own that which you create? You created the dimension? And he kind of just looks at you. This was simple. How would one go about creating such a thing? And he kind of just looks at you and says, 
I think if you keep making the same friends, and he gestures towards your hammer, you will have your own in no time. Huh. Well, I like the sound of that. I need to seek more of these um, friends. And he kind of just says the word, yes. In exactly as suspicious a method as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell the whole time he's try like he's clearly sizing you up, like the whole time, as if toying with food. You know, he's waiting to try and see kind of who you are without really asking you anything. That's kind of the vibe <laughs> you're getting from this. I don't know. I wouldn't know how to start, but. <laughs> huh. I don't want to just announce myself. That sounds pretty rude. Like, this is who I am. <laughs> mm. So yeah, do you break the silence at all? That it starts to build. Can you tell me more about yourself? And he does that thing where he leans back slowly and puts his arm over the kind of like kind of cushioned kind of sofa thing you sat on. With. What exactly would you like to know? Um, like, what, like, profession do you hold? And he just smirks. And he says, "I hold a title, not a profession." Oh. I have a title too, but I am just a lord. He says, I am king. King of what? Of everything. So you're like a god? You can see, without even needing to roll anything, he looks like he's just tasted bad wine. Like, his face contorts when you say the word God. And he says, Nothing so crass that demands worship for nothing. Hmm. You're the king of everything, but you don't claim to be a god. Hmm. I serve the people, and in turn, they serve me. The king of... So... What? <laughs> My head. Um. So, are you are you the wizard king? A crass title. I am King Magna. Huh. At this point, I'm just like a, a bit uncomfortable with the. Uh, yeah, maybe with... maybe the room seems a bit too tight. All of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, um, crap. Your silks got all sweaty, you know. Just like, oh dear. I'm like, I'm in the in the uh, presence of someone incredibly powerful that I can only ever wish to uh, learn part of their strength. Mm. So yeah, with that uncomfortable shift, I think um, he notices this, and he says. Were you unaware of my status? Yes, um, I haven't seen you before. I have only heard of you, my king. And he kind of like, his face kind of seems less kind of strained, if that makes sense. Less strained and he kind of focuses a bit more and he says, you are unfamiliar with my work? I've led a sheltered life. Um, I haven't really been told too much of the outgo of what goes on out outside of Glitterhagen. So Glitterhagen is where you call home? Yes. I see. I'm, I'm part of the Rainwood family. At the minute, I am the head. 
And this is because of your missing parents. Indeed. How goes your search for them? I haven't found a clue of their whereabouts at the minute. It seems you seek things that are impossible to find. I don't believe in the impossible. Again, you Everything can, you can, can see his, his, his face has softened a bit of that as well because he's obviously starting to like warm up to you a bit. Yeah, every, everything can be obtained one way or another, whether it's through power, bribery, or just sheer luck. I do not believe in luck, but I agree. Power, even if done through money, is still power over your challenges. And he just, he kind of like stands up and he says, does that thing where he folds his arms behind his back and just starts kind of pacing. And he's um, going to share some art that Stu helped me with, uh, previous to now. Just because I don't know why you don't have a visual of this guy just yet. So I'm going to get you that just now, if I can find where I put it. Uh, where is the button I need? Where is the button I need? Check it in general chat for now. He's topless? Yeah. Whole time. Oh. oh, he's just on the map. Is he that big? Yeah, why not? It's just... <laughs> and, uh, it's for everybody. King Magna. Powerful man. Yeah. And I feel like I'll take him off there because he shouldn't really be on there. Just stamping all over the world. <laughs> but yeah, so he just starts pacing up and down as if thinking about it. Just what you've been talking about. Is there a way? I was going to say, do you interrupt yeah. his train of thought or do you just sit there? Or carry on, what were you going to ask? Uh, I was going to say, uh, is there a way you can help me become more powerful so I can find my parents? And he kind of gestures beneath him to the, uh, like the kind of fighting pit, and he says, You could always improve your prowess. Flexing one's muscles is the only way to build them. I could. That's true. Um, would we? Where would I uh, go about doing this in a manner that would help me become strong faster? Do you believe your bond to be debilitating? Depends on the bond. I I don't know too much about it, so I cannot judge. Perhaps you should learn more about your bond with the Mother of Sorcery. So I should try find the Mother. Do you believe that by severing this bond, exploiting it, do you believe this will bring harmony to you or despair? Hmm. I was initially terrified at the thought that I was bound to some being that is hopelessly stronger than I am. But now, I might. I, I feel like I could learn something from thing, uh, from from. You feel like you could learn something from. The bond. The now, blue. I feel you should learn something from this bond, if only to better your own knowledge, improve your own knowledge and grow in power. 
and he kind of like does that kind of fist clenching out to the side supervillain pose um, that everyone knows exactly what I mean and uh, he kind of turns back to you puts his hands behind his back again he just kind of stands there regally and he says I will not help you become stronger me improving you only makes you weak so I must do this myself I did this myself any kind of gestures around him Hmm. When you do something equally as powerful, I will help you. Uh, what help would you provide? I do not believe that matters until you're in a position to ask for it. Fair enough. The help you require today may be the help you offer someone then. Hmm. There's a lot to think about. Thank you. He kind of just like turns back as if thinking, you know, I kind of half turn away from you as if he doesn't really intend to say you're welcome or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so the gist of that scene is he's basically said I'll give you help when you can help yourself yeah that's my god mm -hmm. unless it just reminds you you can't even open a book at the moment <laughs> Shush. <laughs> Shush. that's the first step <laughs> but yeah like he's basically saying improve on your own and then you'll be worthy of whatever you need done right because at the moment like, realize that you can't even leave this room. Yep. So, yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's time I try find a way back to the party I'm traveling with. You are traveling with companions. Are these also? And he kind of gestures to the, the hammer again. Oh, oh, no, no. Uh, I'm the only one in the party that was given this. Have you asked why it was you? I assumed it's because I didn't want to shoot him and I ran up to him and tried to speak to him. I can't narrow his eyes, Him. Lord. Um. Janice? Yes. Ah, the old god. Yes. And he kind of like starts like, he's maybe like standing right next to the kind of floating kind of staff as it's just kind of slowly kind of spinning there and the kind of red jewels kind of glittering in the kind of middle of the black prongs. And he kind of just goes to kind of like almost caress the staff ever so slightly um, as if thinking back. Uh, and he says, do you wish to return to them? If possible, yes. And how will you achieve this? With some rest, I should be able to uh, uh, charge my hammer and uh, make my way back. Good. That was the correct answer. You may use this room until you can leave it. Until Thank then. You. It was a pleasure, Lord Eric Rinwood. Thank you, Mikey. It kind of like does a very slight kind of movement of the head. It could be a nod if you were generous. Um, <laughs> and then he just um, grips the staff uh, and then just steps backwards through a big red opening vortex. And it seals. And you're in the room alone. Uh, sleep time, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you notice in the corner, like behind where he was standing, there is like a very large kind of massive bed. King size, yep. you could say. <laughs> I guess uh, I'll make myself comfortable and go uh, take an eight hour rest. Yeah, cool. Uh, meanwhile, back with the party. 
the main party. Hmm. Yes. So, he's are in that kitty holding up her map, turning the, the letter upside down, looking at the map again. Um, map always seems to write itself. The ink just kind of reforms every time you move the paper. Um, Eremos is probably... Turn being, the tail. Yeah, exactly. And Eremos <laughs> is like, probably like, oh my god, this is so cool, and tries to keep like, kind of pulling at it, to have a look <laughs> at it. Um, and I assume by this point you've all like, opened your own letters and again, yeah. exact same kind of oily pearlescent you look to all the ink and then it all reforms and you've all got your your maps as you're just kind of standing in what looks like a very nice kind of palatial garden follow the map anyway see where it takes us so yeah it's the map itself um when you're looking at it it shows you the area you're in and it kind of directs you into like um like places you can go also the maps are in the language you speak, like your predominant language. Um, mm. So, weirdly, I think that might be the same for everybody um, anyway, which is handy. But even if you looked at someone else's map, uh, yeah, it would be in the language you speak. So, that might be a bit confusing if you're all speaking Elven and looking at the maps and you all see Elven. So, yeah. And uh, Aaron Weiss is like, where where do we go? Well, on the map is it what like so yeah. the other places or does it just say a green line going this way, can I say? Yeah, so you've got like the big plaza, like it's almost like a kind of makeshift market. You can imagine this is where most people do trade. Like it's the first kind of yeah, people thing. Yeah. yeah, essentially. But then you've got a bunch of um archways like it like flanking the kind of edges of this space because it's not really a room it's just like you know yeah. it's, a, it's a space yeah and then um, there are big archways and the one at the very far side goes to you know towards obviously the royal sector as it were and um, the central plaza and then the other ones go off to different sectors because there's like um this is where all the kind of wizards would come to study as well like there's universities hundreds of them here and um, there's magic shops and um, there's obviously specialists here um, there are so many different things here, to be honest. Um, this is Magic Central, quite frankly. So yeah, like the most direct route would be to cross the entire plaza and go towards that big gate at the far side. Unless you just want to go exploring well, for other things. Uh, well, we just go unless somebody's got thousands of coin and they want to spend it. I say we just go for the Royal Plaza place. Uh. Mm-hmm. What's everybody else's thoughts? Yeah, we should probably head up to where the mm. maps are telling us to go, so... Mm. Yep. Well, the map doesn't actually specifically tell you where to go. The map is showing you Horizon, but only the part you're in. Can I pinch it and I'll zoom out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can pinch it and the ink just reforms what you pinched. <laughs> um, sadly, it's not quite that cool. It's not like <laughs> a smart paper. <laughs> um, it's kind of more about the... Again, let's see. Have you ever been to Horizon? There's a question. I don't. I think we said you hadn't been, but like... I think no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't know, maybe Kitty could explain it to you a bit better than Kitty. Do you want to give me an arcana check? And we'll see how well you can explain this to to Reach. Mm. Right, bear with me. I just have to keep reopening my character oh. sheet because it just keeps closing. I had to hold back, um. just making bear noises myself there, too, so thank you. <laughs> picking up the team slack. Yeah. Did That's, I press yeah. it? Yep, you did. We got it. We got it. It's a, yeah. it's a good roll as well. I am. Um, Horizon isn't always in the same layout. That's the problem. The gates connect to where they need to connect to. Um, and it's made up of various sectors. So you couldn't just walk in a circle around Horizon. You would need to use the gates to go to the part you need to go to. Which is why you only get the space you're in on the map. Because if it tried to show you all of Horizon, it would just be like several pages of here's this sector, here's this sector, here's this sector. Not like a city map, for example. Um, in Glitterhagen, you could get somebody to actually draw you a city map. In Horizon, you'd be laughed at if you asked for a map. Um, 
because if you're there and you don't know where you're going, you're probably going to die through some magical mishap or getting lost between the spaces of the city. Um, which is apparently quite common to people that, you know, maybe come here to get lost. So, yeah, use the gates, know where you want to go. Don't fuck up. Um, or you might end up like um, possibly some of Kitty's friends. Who knows these things? But yeah, so that's what Kitty knows about uh, Horizon and its layout, is that, yeah, you kind of want to know where you're going. Alright. We'll carefully read them up and try and head towards Royal Place. Yeah, you're welcome to head that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, is uh, Arya, are you following suit as well? Yeah, I would just be obviously looking around, not really in my element, not really enjoying being there. Because, mm -hmm. you know, too much man made stuff. But, um, yeah. I'll just be following what these guys do and uh, just uh, I ideally I think by this point we I think we want to find out like actually no we'll we'll find it in later on never mind yeah okay <laughs> you sure like I mean I yeah 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 it's fine mm -hmm. okay okay uh, yeah so we're yeah. more dedicated if we just. I mean, these have been casual invitations that have lasted over two months, so, I mean... Well... <laughs> it's not our fault we got lost in, in time! <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. Kind of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to struggle to play when someone else is <laughs> <laughs> It's the Great Gold Suns, or, you know, it's Great Gold... Uh, uh, the Great Gold Sun, that'll do. Um, right, you, you head through uh, the plaza, you've got hundreds of people trying to sell you stuff. Right, constantly. Um, Keep Eremos away from things. I mean, Eremos is so fascinated by literally anything because he got super excited about trying to learn magic from Eric. You know, Reach has Eric's book and Eremos has kind of been stuck between Kitty and Reach because one has a cool magic map she's following because she seems to know what she's doing and Reach has a magic book that could teach Eremos magic because that's what Eric told him. <laughs> so... Yeah, and now he's in a city made of magic. He went through a magic gate. His eyes couldn't be bigger. <laughs> so, this is probably the quietest he's ever been because he's kind of doesn't have enough time to really take everything in. Um, also, he got a natural 20. So he's taking everything he possibly can in. Um, so yeah, Aramos is going to be difficult to wrangle. But as long as you keep an eye on him and like keep kind of pulling him along with the group. He won't just get, you know, wander off. Um, uh, I've got some rope, by the way. We could... I'm sure I've got some rope. Hemp rope. Hemp. <laughs> we could just make tie him uh, with us. Make a wee leash for him. Which <laughs> might not be a bad idea, you know. So uh, you want to have a slave child drag uh, by? If you go down the street, you see them quite often. <laughs> Guys! Uh, just... I think it's there. safe to say he's gonna be like at the middle between all of us and like maybe I'll have a hand on his one shoulder and then somebody has a hand on the other shoulder and we're kinda like steering him. <laughs> <laughs> Ari, just hold his hand and pull him along. Or that. Yeah. Oh yeah, he didn't mind being touched by me and me touching his hand, so I'll 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 be doing that. Ask him for permission first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, he um yeah, I think, like as I said, if you're willing to st spend some time wrangling them, yeah, and plus it makes sense, Arya, you, that you're the one that's not too fussed in, like, the unnatural magic of everything here. Because mm. um, it is definitely artificial magic vibes that you get. Yeah. This isn't, like, the natural magic of, like, the druids. Um, not to say you wouldn't see the occasional druid here. Um, yeah, but it's not... It's not common, but it isn't. Super, you're more likely to see a druid yeah. here than in Glitterhagen, for example. Uh huh. Um, well, okay. Um, but again, they might be passing through, and this is a good place to pass through. So, or they might be selling kind of weird natural magic remedies, you know, etc. Because money mm. is money. Um, any of these doorways look like any of the ones in the uh, set the, oh, the, the Golden Gate place I was. But the Celestial Nexus. Celestial Nexus. That's uh, it. No. None of them look right. like those archways. Um, right. These look almost geometric, these ones. 
Um, yeah. So, yeah, almost like um, what's the best way to put it? Like octagons and hexagons, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas they looked very ornate. Um, maybe even somewhere between Greek and Roman. Um, yep. Okay. In the celestial nexus. So similar in the sense that they're an archway, but when you walk towards these ones, you don't. Everything doesn't just dissolve into a star field around you. Uh, mm -hmm. You just go into like a wall of like bluey purple energy. But yeah, can I say any purple? And yeah, so you just make it all the way through. Unless anybody wants to try and actually like shop or explore, this would be a great place to shop if you wanted to. Um, and keep in mind, you do have golden order equipment on you. That might be worth something to somebody, but it might need to be slightly less than reputable. Because, yeah, the Golden Order are a bit funny about their stuff being... Sold, hot. Yeah. <laughs> Especially right after, like, Zadreka was, yeah, like... Yeah, <laughs> that, that seems to me like a really bad idea. Like, we would be pissing off Zadreka and possibly the Great Gold One as well, so... Yeah. Do you know if you'll be smart to sell any of this? Because I think if she got wind of you guys raiding the armory for what little you took to just hawk uh, uh, Horizon's market after she arranged the boat to go to Glitterhagen. Yeah, she might be a we bit pissed off. To piss her off anyway, <laughs> so we don't do yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suitably so. Uh, just call it a D word. No, no, you stay in your fucking rectangle of imprisonment. <laughs> okay, you enjoy your The Prisoner episode that you're having. I'm sleeping, I'm, I'm sound. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, does anybody want to buy anything here? Have anybody got any, their eyes on anything? Mm, nothing, I can thank you. I was going to say, because healing potions, etc. and all that jazz, definitely here. You might even be able to find some greater healing potions. Um, various things like that, so yeah. This is definitely anything even remotely magical. Mundane stuff is probably harder to find, weirdly, but it could be sourced. Because um, people come to hawk all sorts, quite frankly. <laughs> How much is Eric's book worth? <laughs> I will find you and murder you. <laughs> <laughs> At uh, the moment, you're going to struggle to find me in the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because can you imagine trying to teleport into Horizon, given that it's not yeah. necessarily in the same place all the time? <laughs> yeah, that would be... Uh, yeah, it's almost like it was designed that way, so it couldn't just have some kind of, you know, teleport assault take it. Um... Mm. But yeah, who, who would design such a thing that way? But yeah, no, it's up to you guys. If you've got anything in mind that you maybe want, let me know. Uh, otherwise, carry on through the market. Uh, if you want to try and appraise his book, you're welcome to. Mm. Uh, <laughs> ah, come on. No, I think it's safe that we just keep the book safe instead of showing it around to random people. I would actually be some an easy way of getting in, maybe some information about it. Mm. Uh. If we know how much it's worth, we've got a good idea how powerful it is for a start. That's it depends. But, like, <laughs> what if somebody just goes, oh, that's only like seventeen copper. That's it's it's, it's all it was worn. The chains busted. Like, you know, the lock snags. Like seventeen copper. I'll try and open it then, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not easy. What good's a book you can't read? See, fifteen <laughs> copper. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's up to you though. You can definitely have that conversation with somebody if you want to try and find some kind of bookstore. Because I mean, yeah, nah. we're okay. It's more for Eric that, yeah. Although this is the perfect place for it. But anyway, yeah, no, definitely. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that these are things you can do. So just so you are aware, I wouldn't want you to think you didn't let me do that. Um, uh, Kitty, anything you want to do in the the marketplace mall? Uh, just sort of look around. I don't mm. think there's anything I need to buy. Mm. Um, no, just keep my eyes peeled. You never know. Marketplaces are not always safe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfect timing. Perfect. <laughs> like somebody steps on your tail at that exact moment. <laughs> Probably Eremos not paying attention. Um, <laughs> perfect. Let's see. Where are we here? Right, okay. So, uh, yeah, if you want to head through the, the next big gateway, 
into yeah. the kind of royal kind of plaza, as it were, or sector, or whatever called it before. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you head through there. Uh, you can see what looks like a kind of very nice grand, like white tower, almost like kind of crystal looking. Um, ahead of you, it starts to like when you kind of look at it and the light hits it, it starts to like reflect a bit like a prism. Um, and you've got all different kind of lights coming from it, so it almost shines like a rainbow effect. So it probably looks very Disney picturesque as soon as you kind of get that nice kind of open shot of it. Um, and beforehand, it's a very kind of fancy garden, as if you have to walk through the kind of, you know, almost. Think Isengard before they trashed it, only made of crystal, you know? And so instead of a big black evil looking tower with a beautiful garden surrounded it, it's a very nice crystal tower with a beautiful garden surrounded it. Um, and yeah. Everyday heading in, I guess. Yep. 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 Cool. Everyday's Howdy. maps kind of do that inky thing where they all reform, and it does. It shows you like a very kind of large kind of circular shape. Um, the shape is again like a big octagon though, so it's not quite a circle. Um, and there are obviously big kind of like posts where there are eight other kind of big archways all around this. Um, that reach is similar to the Celestial Nexus, but only in the sense that there were eight doors in the Celestial Nexus and there are eight sides to this huge garden, this big walled yeah. garden. Um, and in the centre is like a big crystal tower. But then if whoever designed this place knew of that place, they maybe designed it after it, maybe? That's... who knows? That's yeah. maybe just coincidence. Um, but yeah, he's around the Royal Garden. And yeah, the central kind of place is uh, the focal point. If you were going to find the person who runs the city, aka Princess Justoria, she's likely in the tower. Head for the tower. Yeah. Set and go for it. So, as you head in, we have a beautiful map to look at. Look at that. Beautiful garden. Very nice. Yes. And as you walk in. There is the trees, big trees, at the far side. These are like little shrubs things. And then there's big trees here, here, and here, and here. Let's see. You just probably come in. Can someone roll a d4 for me? I don't really care here. Oh, oh. Oh well, loads. <laughs> right, gonna loads. Use one, two, three, four. Now we get my nut. There we go. I used to because it came first, purely because it was the first one rolled. Right, where have I put the players? So, boop. 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 And an Eremos. Behind you, yep. And if you, if you could just do me the best of favours and roll initiative for me. Click your token, roll initiative. Because the trees come to life. I've made my token too tiny, one second. <laughs> and I can't click on myself now. One second. These things. Who need tree things? Ah, they look friendly. Ah, ish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they definitely look... Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's let's go with the ish part. That's the best part. Um, where did I put those though? Right. So I can't highlight myself. So oh, how so? Oh, that's okay. Oh god! I'll, I'll, I'll be able to do that. Don't worry. I'll roll your initiative for you. I can roll initiative. I just can't click my character. It's okay. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> okay. Uh, initiative. Oh, that's fine. Uh, right, two seconds till I find where I put that. Here we are. Actually, we're just trying to find the artwork for it because I can dump that in the chat as well because there's full artwork. That thing. Look how adorable that looks. He mm -hmm. says loosely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we will take a break there and we'll come back. 
And we'll see how well this goes for you guys. I like how I got like... What the hell? Is everybody getting 11? It's just the way it going. You got I... obviously double that, because you're twice as yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, so. like, yeah. Like, uh, I'm amused <laughs> how everybody got like half what I got. The druid should do well here. Mm. We'll see. Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, yes. We'll see. <laughs> Don't guess too. <laughs> Where did his eleven come from? Yeah, I rolled it. Ah, Why? Oh, yeah. The trees uh, get initiative as well. Yeah, like I see a seventeen, but that's a deck save, so I'm a bit like, oh, oh I see the GM. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got. Although for some bizarre reason, that isn't that token isn't representing him the way it should, which it really should do. Let's see. There we go, let's save that here. Good, that'll do. Um, hopefully that's worked. That or I've made Kitty or Moss, one of the two. Uh, token, boop. There we go, makes sense. Right, uh, guys, we will uh, take our break here and we will return in, I don't know, what, 10, 10 minutes? Yeah, see everybody in 10 minutes. Oh, bye bye. Perfect. Bye. Bye. Bye.